Praise the Lord, my dear brothers and sisters. Greetings to you in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I hope this session finds you in good health, good peace, and in good prosperity, right? Um, I always keep telling you this. If you believe in the word of God, you will definitely believe in both the materialistic and the spiritual prosperity. I don't have to explain to you about the materialistic prosperity, but because you definitely know it's all to do with materials. But when it comes to spiritual prosperity, that's where we have major confusions and misapprehensions, not only within Christendom, but in all congregations or among all the Christians, especially. Because many people gladly ignore the topic or the subject that spiritual prosperity is to do with the spirit-filled matters or spirit-related matters. And Bible leaves behind strong references in this aspect or in this regard. That is Galatians 5, 22 and 23, the fruits of the Holy Spirit. And 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 to 11, it's about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And people mix up both gifts and fruits. Many, many, many people have mixed it. I have always seen that in my entire walk in Christendom and among the Christians. Um, and I have been there too. But then it took me plenty of time, a lot of years, in fact, more than a decade to understand the difference. The fruits of the Holy Spirit really talks about the quality of your spiritual life, right? The health of your spiritual life. Are you a sick person spiritually? Are you a healthy person spiritually? Or you are a person who needs medication, right? More of prayer, more of support, uh, more of talks and all that, or coaching and teaching like this. People don't tend to think through this and they end up in, uh, in a, in, a, in a terrible problem or in the net of the devil. Because why? The moment you don't realize the fruits and you skip the fruits and then jump into the gifts, which is very popular, at least among the Pentecostal Christians, because I keep telling you this, they, all their focus is on speaking in tongues, right? All their focus is about miracles, healing, yeah? No medicine, don't go to hospital, yeah? Stay at home. Meditate on the word of God. God, word of God will heal you. At that time, before they, uh, you know, uh, uh, c c count their last breath, that's when they rush to the hospital. And the doctor says, oh, why, did you get, why didn't you get this person even before? We could have saved his life, right? Bible doesn't talk about these kind of stupid doctrines. These are all man-made doctrines, right? Getting into the extremity of the spiritual realm skipping the basics and the basics are fruits why i say fruits because first of all you need to prove that you are trustworthy to god how much you respect man not man made creations god made creations that is human beings right how much god can trust you is what you need to instill as a confidence in him for you to be used to the in the next level right that's called as miracle worker prophet yeah dreaming visions missionary evangelist preaching teaching discerning yeah and then freeing people from the bondage of evil spirit manifestations and whatnot right but when you are not qualified and what makes you qualify fruits of the holy spirit should i have all the nine fruits that's between you and god but if you give me a choice i would definitely say all nine fruits are important can you believe somebody saying i have joy love and peace but I have no faith. Is it possible? You tell me. It's not about joy or peace or love or faith. No, it's joy and peace and faith and love and patience. Yeah. And long suffering and self-control. Can you believe if it is going to be or that means one of the fruit if I have that's enough. What is my gift God? No gift. You will be thrown into hell. You are that wicked servant about whom God is talking or Jesus is talking in Matthew 25 and 26. You are definitely a goat. You're not sheep. Why? Because you have not heard the shepherd's voice. That is also being preached. It's available in my channel. You can, you can listen to it when you have time. Okay. 
Now, what, why we are saying all of this is the most important aspect that can help you in building upon the fruits are the words of your mouth. Many people think that words of the mouth have nothing to do with the subject called the fruits of the Holy Spirit that has got lots to do. And before that, let's not forget another thing, the thoughts that originate in your heart. The thoughts that are processed in your heart and mind is also something you need to watch out. You need to really take care of these two things. And this is what we had been discussing for the last 17 sessions. This is our 17th session. Welcome to the series where we are talking about this untamable tongue, untamable tongue, um, which is not something that any one of us could control that easily. And we have discussed about this in episode one from the book of James chapter three verses one to 12. And I'm, I'm yet to do something from 13 to 19. I will do it towards the tail end. And then we started episode two, where we are discussing the, we are discussing on the same lines, the untamable tongue, but from the life of Jesus, right? We are now taking the book of John. And now we are discussing from the book of John, various incidents where Jesus was put to temptation. Jesus was forced by the human beings to speak, get angry and emotionally, uh, emotional outbursts. All of this we had been discussing and we had been reviewing this, right? We have spoken about Samaritan women. We have spoken about feeding the 5,000. We have spoken about Jesus turning water into wine. All of these we have discussed and we will be continuing to talk because I told you many times, this is a heavy lifting subject and you don't want to take it seriously. And that's why I'm trying to inculcate seriousness, taking that initial five to 15 minutes, a, a, a session after session to tell you how important this is uh, to watch out the words of the mouth and not just changing your outward appearance or your outlook, right? But here we are talking about the internals. We want to talk about your attitude, your belief system, your value system, right? Your behavioral pattern, all of these things originate from deep within you. And what you see outside is only a reaction. Words of your mouth is considered as a reaction, right? You react to a situation and therefore your words are spoken there, right? Angry words, filthy words, lousy words, stupid words, idiotic words. Yeah. Waging war with your brother, cursing somebody or grumbling words and words of revenge, words of hurt, words of brawl. You pull somebody for a fight, you know, to show how big you are. And that too, they will say how big I am in the Lord. They will use Jesus name and they will fight. Bigger is your judgment, beloved. Bigger. Watch out. Okay. So in the process of this discussion from the book of John, today we will be, we will see how many, how much ever possible to cover we will cover. But I, I won't rush. But at the same time, I won't take plenty of time because we already have set a good context in the past six sessions in this episode. This is our seventh session and we will see what best to do, right? And here we are talking about a situation where um, Jesus calls himself as that bread, that manna from heaven, right? The manna was given to the children of Israel in the wilderness when they grumbled against God that they don't have food, right? If this incident happens immediately after the water uh, being turned, the bitter water being turned into sweet water, and they again grumble, no food, no food, what? How, can, how long can we live in water and water alone? Right? This is how they treated God. This is the language they used to talk to God. Can you talk in this language to your boss? Try it. Probably you will return back home, home with a pink slip. And you know what is pink slip? You are going to be sacked from your job. And you know how to behave and kind of, you know, keep your boss happy. But we are talking here about the boss of the boss and his name is Jesus. And it costs so much for him. Okay, now here we are talking about a situation um, where Jesus is describing himself as that manna, right? The bread of life. And he's also talking about the blood. Everybody should partake. And we will be going through that in a moment. But not before we um, go through a few verses. Uh, John chapter 6, verse 32. Then Jesus said to them, 
sorry verse 30 then therefore they said to them what sign will you perform then that we may see it and believe you what work will you do as if jesus by then he had done so many miracles i discussed about that and i've explained you we all have discussed about this true together but we have not gone through every single paraphrase from the book of john um, if you would if you were to go through those um, events miracles that jesus did there were plenty of them main man healed at the pool of bethesda and a nobleman's son was healed and um, he had uh, spoken to the samaritan women and uh, you know many people came from samaria they believed him and he also healed the people there he fed the 5000 people with bread uh, and uh, he multiplied that fish and bread and uh, and then so many things already happened and jesus spoke in parables being very authoritative in his speech are this not enough sometimes the words of your mouth really tempts god it conveys a strong message god this is not enough for me to trust you not enough do some more miracles give me some more money my bank balance is not enough that i should trust you as the sovereign god or accept you as my savior or accept you as my deliverer or redeemer this healing is not enough still it's paining here still it's paining there you have healed only three sicknesses out of five when are you going to heal those two we all talk in this language right some or other at some or other point in your life you always end up talking in this language don't you i have spoken in this language many times to my lord and now i understand how a big an idiot i was <laughs> thinking that when you do something to me that's when i will believe you am i doing a favor to god that's what i was thinking that's what many people think if god heals me then i'll become your disciple else i won't become your disciple who's the loser here if you heal me i will believe you else i won't believe you who's the loser here again you don't believe you don't want to become a disciple you don't want to abide by the laws and commandments you don't want to be an obedient child to god you are the biggest loser why because you cannot tempt god you cannot order god yeah many people take this verse that john 14:16 after me a holy holy spirit will be given to you of my stature and he will be your helper many people think that they can even use holy spirit to ma- make him clean toilets and stuff like that no no he is god living in you and you are expected to give that respect and honor right not the bare minimal res- respect that you give to your office boy or peer on um, if you are in a government organization not that bare minimal respect but the highest respect that this great god deserves that the supreme god deserves but many people have taken this words um with a lot of misapprehensions that they could order him something and he would go and get it's not a bearer in the hotel right hey get me the menu yeah bring this 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 then you will be waiting and after he brings you will alert him how long you took to give it to me huh this food is not hot and that food is so called you start complaining he's not that bearer in the hotel that you and i can treat him that way he's the most sovereign god lowering his form and he came in the form of humility and then again he lowered and then he made the holy spirit to dwell in our body that is a temple of our that is that is a, that that is the temple of god our own body this thinking body this this body through which you do all nasty things filthy things yet he lives inside you why because you have accepted the name of jesus there is no other reason who you think you are what do you think about yourself you're such a great talented person you're the most righteous on earth you are the most brilliant you're the most intellectual and god needs your help you don't need god's help god needs your help is that what you think <laughs> i'm feeling literally sad because why i was there too i'm not excluding me i would go on um, shake the throne of god and ask him right now you got to prove that you are my god i want you to answer speedily and i will quote verses like psalm 102 verse 2 when i pray to you you are the one who is answering speedily and i will lay my hands upon the areas where the sicknesses are Uh, where where i'm inflicted with sickness right now in the name of jesus this words may be fulfilled in me and then i i will believe that you are god i have done all the stupid things right why i spend little time in explaining that is the words of your mouth can not only annoy god can also make him angry 
and you are thinking that he is not angry why because when if god is angry he would already burn me with fire right he would send fire from heaven and burn all my household right or he would create accidents or he would uh, create something else and all that no that is not the same god he had sent his son jesus since you are standing in his name he doesn't look at you directly he doesn't look at your shortcomings directly why because jesus comes as our intercessor he intermediate intermediates or he 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 intercepts right and he says no god you cannot do this look at my scars look at the sufferings that i went through he is still my disciple he is still my believer he is still my brother please don't punish him jesus is not ordering god but he is pleading for our needs day and night and he is called as intercessor yes hebrews 113 sorry hebrews 13 113 and hebrews 1214 and 1 john uh chapter 2 and verse 1 all these verses you take and read jesus is playing a different role dying for the unrighteous although he was just and righteous 1 peter 119 1 peter 318 you don't read any of these then how would you value god especially through the words of your mouth you understand when god hears these kind of things how bad he is going to feel i've given him so much i've done him so much all that i'm asking is have faith in me during situations that are troublesome during situations that are uh, shaking your expectations or not according to your expectations that are challenging john 14:1 and 27 in this world there are troubles but take heart do not lose your heart do not lose your spirit do not lose your confidence that's what that's what it means but look at these fellows as if this whatever jesus had done already was not enough and many more things he did by this time uh, which is covered in matthew mark and luke the other books was it not enough but look at their attitude you know what this attitude is called as wicked attitude tempting and testing god ordering god pushing god challenging god what is the attitude called demonic because that's what that was the attitude of devil isaiah 14 and ezekiel 28 you take and read you will understand how lucifer became a devil what were the um uh what were the uh, reasons right what was nomenclature the the uh, the men- mental nomenclatures that uh, put him in such a position that god got really worked up and angry with him and he had to push him down and he came down and he's devouring 1 peter 5 7 he devours the mankind like a prowling lion inflicting the similar spiritual disease and sickness and bible says in psalm 133 that you and i need to pray over our spiritual sicknesses and diseases and ask for healing forgive our iniquities and heal our sicknesses and diseases many people claim this for their physical sicknesses like fever body pain etc no you got to pray over your spiritual sickness disease and sickness that's what i have started with right because why this is a big hindrance to exercise the fruits of the holy spirit freely and you don't exercise the fruits of the holy spirit freely the words of your mouth are always going to stand defiled yes the words of your mouth will never become holy your deeds will never become holy you will never be able to present yourself as righteous claiming that magic words 1 john 1 7 8 and 9 oh in the name of jesus i am cleansed by his blood therefore i am righteous true you confessed your sin i don't think so all right you confess your sin what did you do about it did you repent i don't think so okay you repent now what did you do did you act upon that repentance i don't think so you need to act act means not a hypocrite be the doer of the word not just the hearer yeah James 4 James 122 says that I'm always giving you scriptural references did you notice because why these are all not my own stories I'm not reading something from a fairy tales novel book right this is word of god and you and I need to pause I'm now reading that again for you therefore they said to him therefore Jesus answered and said to him said to them see verse 29 is very interesting right um Jesus answered and said to them this is the work of god that you believe in him whom he sent he is asking people to believe in him these were the words that proceeded from the mouth of our lord jesus right and he is asking them to believe based on the works he has done 
and that's what I have taken some little time to explain. Right? The words of his mouth are really, really something that you need to take time analyze. You see, when we analyze, we will get more light on who we are and the quality of our spiritual health. That's why I'm taking little time to describe, explain. Huh? Therefore, we are all united, connected. Is this not clear enough? Is it so difficult for you to understand? Which is, which means, hey, do not, uh, you know, uh, do not doubt me. Have the belief and faith in you. At least by seeing the works which I had done so far, man, so many miracles, so many sick were healed, lame started to walk, blind started to see, yeah, deaf people started to hear, people who were sickness, having dreadful sicknesses, they were healed, lepers were healed, and not just healing. Even the demonic forces were trembling. Did you not see? And look at my teachings with what authority I speak. Did you hear any kind of these teachings from the rabbis, so-called Pharisees, the chief high priest or whoever it may be? Did you hear? Ha, Jesus makes this claim in one sentence. I always told you, if Jesus is speaking one sentence, it is equal to maybe 10,000 words. <laughs> or maybe even more than that. There is so much encompassed within every word that jesus spoke to the mankind and you cannot just rush and read do not rush yeah jesus asks them specifically hey do you believe man do not believe at least see my works and believe man then also you don't believe huh? actually this must be given with an excla exclamation rather than a question mark no no this is not a question mark this is a sentence Verse number 30, therefore, you know, when the therefore is used, you all know English and grammar, no? Therefore means, I explained already, this is not enough. Do something more. Mm. Is he a magician coming with some magic tricks and he wants to do some magic and all that? No, he's representing God the Father and God the Father is representing himself through the Son of God, Jesus is none other than the father do you do we all understand that huh? okay those people didn't understand fine they didn't have bible etc no church no pastor no teachers no preachers how about you and me we all behave absolutely fine perfect we don't go and doubt god therefore they said to him what sign will you perform then that we may see it and believe you what work will you do this similar attitude you saw when Jesus was hanging on the cross, you know, people questioning him. By then, three and a half years was over. This happened at the beginning of his ministry. Three and a half years, Jesus did so many miracles. John says, if all of those were to be written, you know, the world won't be enough to contain the books. So much Jesus did to these people. And he moved around and did good to the people, Bible says. Having seen everything, whatever they questioned at the beginning of his ministry, can you believe? They questioned the same thing. You know, he is just counting his minutes anytime he may pass away, right? He's hanging on the cross. And these guys are saying, come down and prove it to us that you are capable to come down even this situation. We may see and believe. You understand, huh? So what I'm saying is for some people, how much ever is given? They will never be satisfied. The words of their mouth will always be grumbling, questioning, challenging, murmuring. Can you believe this? You do something else. You do a different sign. You do different miracle. We may see and believe words of the mouth. Nasty words. Verse number 31. Our fathers, now they are putting an example. Now they are dictating Jesus, right? Jesus, you did miracles according to your standards, according to your will and desire. Now do something which we are going to tell you, like a new use case. If you're a software engineer, you will understand. A new case study. Hmm? We will give you a new riddle. And therefore, we want you to prove your brilliance to us by solving that riddle. Riddle means you understand a problem. Hmm? Mathematics problem is given. Uh, see, the same question, if the teacher asks in a different language, Many children won't be able to answer the same question. Likewise, these guys are saying, you did so many miracles. Let's see if you are able to clear this examination. They are testing God. Nothing but. See what they are saying. Our fathers ate the manna 
in the desert as it is written you all you and i also do know when we test god when we tempt god we are so brilliant and intellectual that we quote the word of god ah, as it is written in the word of god and that's why i am asking please give this to me ah. they are saying he gave them bread from heaven to eat then jesus said to them likewise what they are expecting their their expectation is make the heaven open right now and shower that manna right upon us therefore we will be believing that yahweh is you and you are yahweh because we know what yahweh had done to the children of israel in the wilderness we are picking one sample study a case study huh? and we are picking just one miracle that our god did to our forefathers children of children who walked in the wilderness uh, not understanding all their forefathers were killed by god because he was so angry with them yeah they are no more their forefathers why because the guys who ate manna they are the ones who tempted the god the most and you see the same spirit is kind of ruling these guys even after several thousands of years right almost 4000 years of gap now these guys are saying right now you make the heaven open and make the manna come down therefore we will understand and believe that you are god is there a better way to test god or is there any other way to make god angry imagine what would be the reaction of in heaven tell me all the elders all the angels right and all the archangels raphael michael all of them are ready looking at the face of the father just order one word we will go and finish these guys in one swing one angel can kill 1 lakh and 50000 that is 100 150000 people will be killed in one slay so big they are so mighty they are so huge they are yeah and these guys are all ready waiting uh, you know just just speak one word god you don't even have to say one word nod your head we will go and finish these guys and after that jesus will have no trouble on earth <laughs> why because the words of the mouth are so terrible beloved that's what i'm trying to explain and this is our 17th hour i'm not trying to brag am i gaining any popularity the likes and whatever you give in the facebook and all that it doesn't mean anything to me and i don't have so many viewers anyway i'm not doing this for publicity absolutely if there is one brother if there is one sister that's going to repent and realize their mistake i'm glad enough to meet that one brother and one sister in heaven saying that these two people heard your voice that you spoke through me and these are my friends these are my beloved brothers and sisters that's enough i'm searching for that one soul and god is also searching for that one soul you know what searching for that one last sheep you all know that parable no he is always in search of that one last sheep which will turn around and hear heed the voice of the shepherd is not bothered about the remaining 99 so called all good sheep uh we all go to church we all read bible we all do this we all do that we are already beloved god says fine may it be so but i am in search of that one lost sheep sheep which will repent and come to me okay what i am trying to say here is without deviating i'm coming back here they are asking god to open heaven and you know bring that manna down right and you think god would be so very happy marrying with joy wow what a beautiful question ha huh? what a brilliant riddle ha huh? what an intellectual question bunch of stupids and idiots they have not understood and i tell you i tell you this i don't have anything against them because they haven't understood jesus enough they're just seeing him for the first time and hearing things like this but you and i have heard enough of jesus for so many years how about the words of your mouth you need more miracles you need more of the bank balance now now see what jesus says jesus said to them most assuredly i say to you moses did not give you the bread from heaven but my father gives you the true bread from heaven right what he is trying to say here is look at the words of jesus right i well, that's why i explained that the angels um, michael and all that why because the heaven is angry and so would be jesus you think jesus is because why 
father yahweh and jesus and jesus and yahweh if yahweh is angry jesus is there definitely angry but you see how can how come look at his composure right look at this control over his emotions what he speaks because why objective must be met that's it quarreling will not fulfill the objective quarreling will destroy the objective you have a, a certain goal in life and you you face enemies every single day are you going to throw stones at your enemies kick at your enemies beat at your enemies no but you are going to get your enemy on your side through the words of your mouth that is the great thing which attracts me right which which is which is really special about jesus you see how beautifully he speaks i say you moses did not give you the bread from heaven but my father gives you the bread no huh? for the bread of god is he who comes down from the heaven and gives life to the world world then they said to him lord give us this bread always now they are pretending as if they are innocent innocent people right they irritated him and when jesus said you know for the bread of god is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to this world he's talking about his birth he's talking about your about his crucifixion and these guys didn't understand anything then they said to him lord give us that bread that we may eat that bread from um, heaven and they are still relating it to manna you understand that they are not relating it to jesus jesus is saying hey i'm standing here i am that manna you need to eat for your everlasting life you will hunger no more you will not hunger for lust you will not hunger for money you will not hunger for blasphemy you will not hunger for sinning you want the everlasting life eat this bread and jesus said to them i am the bread of life plainly he speaks this time no more talking in figurative language because these guys are anyway not understanding even after seeing my works and miracles if they ask such stupid questions then he decides let me talk plainly he who comes to me shall never hunger and he who believes in me shall never thirst now he's bringing one more topic thirsty right thirst and hunger both of these are very tough to control all of us understand no try starving skipping two meals you will know what it is try not drinking water for 10 hours you will understand what it is because why your physical anatomy demands this food similarly your spiritual anatomy should demand for this bread and water from god water is about the anointing of the holy spirit it talks about the anointing of the holy spirit right and water baptism is different that you are dead to the past sins of the past and you are born again and when you are born again you need to thirst for that anointing and you need to be hungry to eat the word of god eat the word of god means what not just memorizing we are not running academics here right we are not running a bible school like how gamaliel used to run and paul educated from that school and he calls all the christians as a bunch of devils and he started killing them yeah head filled knowledge from bible only can make you like that saul paul's name was saul right saul went after killing christians absolutely in the reverse direction of following god yeah but if you are the transformed paul you know what paul did after he was transformed and his name is translate transformed to paul he wrote 14 epistles you know scholars are believing he was the one who wrote hebrews 14 epistles 14 books and even to this day people have not completely understood because it's so rich and i myself i've not got any closer but i've ended up making so many hundreds of sessions right but i wouldn't even call myself as even 5% of knowledge that i've acquired from those episodes so rich that's what transformation can bring in you right and not just the transformation of uh um, you know your words but i'm talking here about internals renewal of your mind uh renewal of your thought system renewal of your life in terms of belief and faith and what can give you that you need to come closer to jesus you need to pay attention you need to analyze you need to thirst for that anointing therefore not just the words of your mouth gets transformed but the thought process within your heart also gets transformed and you need to be hungry reading the word of god reading the scriptures yes paul was very hungry only reading the scriptures but he was not thirsty to receive the anointing of the holy spirit because he was an old testament man he was taught in the old testament style of reading the scriptures 
yeah but jesus met with him and he understood that he is thirsty but he didn't know that he is thirsty you understand what i'm saying people who are mentally retarded they don't know that they are hungry they will be just moving around they will be made to forcefully sit and people will feed them such a sad situation and that is the situation of many christians today they don't know that the spirit within them is thirsty seeking for more anointing but they move around without even knowing like a mentally retarded person that was the state of the soul and jesus met with him yeah you were hungry therefore you ate enough manna now i understand that you are also thirsty but you do not know about your thirst and i am revealing it to you he brought in that blindness and he made him uh, realize that and he understood paul had realized his mistake and then paul received that anointing 3 years god made him to live uh, elsewhere and teach the bible and read the bible carefully understand jesus and then that's when he grew in the ministry we know about this right all of this happens why because someone understands the real meaning of bread the word of god and someone understands the real meaning of thirst that is the anointing of the holy spirit without these two please please don't call yourself as christians because you are not christians at all you are even worse than heathens and atheists that includes me if i am if i were to practice or learn the word of god this way then i am that hypocrite Jesus you understand why Jesus meant this I am the bread of life man he who comes to me shall never hunger and he who believes in me shall never thirst but i said to you that you have seen me and yet do not believe and that the father gives me uh, and I, sorry and that the father gives me will come to me why because they know about their hunger and thirst right some people know only about hunger not about thirst some people know about thirst and not about hunger i'm talking about the pentecostals now they know only about thirst holy spirit holy spirit holy spirit no reading the word of god no up making the word of god travel through their life right no realization their words are still the same their behavior and attitude is still the same but they call themselves as filled with spirit and speaking in tongues what kind of spirit is that that's not holy spirit yeah that's demonic tongues i've explained about this in other sessions it's in my channel please tune it tune it tune tune up and listen to all of these that's not the angelic tongues that's demonic tongues and that the father gives me will come to me and the one who comes to me i will by no means cast them out you go and ask god for explanations from the word of god he will not cast you if you don't ask explanations from the word of god asking god to reveal give you the revelation yeah give you the light in a million years i will tell you the words of your mouth are not going to change you will be continuing to exercise the habit of being a slanderer being the habit of being a murmurer murmuring is equal to murdering you know that you don't know i will explain that some other day <laughs> from the word of god murmuring you are forcing god yeah to react angrily on you that's what happened in the wilderness and we will go through that separately you continue to live your life in the same way why because you don't ask god because when you come to god you will have reasonings you will have questions you will need clarifications you will need assistant you will need help that's what he says he who comes to me with that reasoning with that question with a clarification not challenging god i will by no means cast them out no i will gladly answer them that's the role of the holy spirit that's the work of the holy spirit holy spirit sheds that light in you he explains you you who you think is talking to you and me right now absolutely holy spirit why because we have reasoning in our heart and he is answering verse number 38 for i have come down from heaven not to do my own will but the will of him who sent me i think this does need explanation verse 39 John 6:39 This is the will of the Father who sent me that of all he has given me I should lose nothing but should raise it up at the last day He's talking about the rapture meeting them in the middle that I am the groom and you are the bride And this is to and 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 this is the will of him who sent me that everyone who sees the son 
and believes in him may have everlasting life and I will raise him up at the last day. Last day is talking about the rapture again. And also it talks about the day of judgment. Revelation 20. Jesus explains all of this for their crazy questions. For their words of stupidity. As an explanation for their words of unbelief. Disobedience. They are not ready to, you know, all of God. To teach them. Gen but they always force God to teach them, you know, um, through punishments. This, this was the, um, happening in the wilderness all the time, isn't it? Then having, look at their stiff, look at their hard heart attitude, right? I've done a series in Tamil about this. Um, you, you, you may have, you, 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 if you have some free time, please go through it, right? About hard heart and hard heart hard heartedness or hard heart. <laughs> Your heart is so hard like a stone that even God cannot break it. I will prove it to you why I'm saying about this in a moment, right? After hearing all of these explanations, verse number 41, then Jew the Jews then murmured against him. Murmured, goose, 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 goose. You hear this, right? You hear such murmuring within your family. What are these words? Words of murmur, absolutely manifesting the demonic attitude. Demons murmur. Demons murmured and that's why they became demons. Yeah. And they murmured in the pit of the hill. They make the mankind, the creations of God to murmur against God. Murmuring is nothing but waging war with God. Calling God an adversary. Adversary means enemy. Opponent. You're treating God as your opponent. You don't murmur. Right? But let your words be yes and no. Jesus said that. And let your words be yes and amen as how my promises are. Second Corinthians 120. These guys murmured against him. Murmuring for what? Because Jesus did not do that miracle. Uh -huh. We are disappointed. Because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven rather than bringing that manna from heaven and proving it, proving to them that he is the son of God, because that was their request and petition, right? But Jesus says, I'm already there, man. I'm that manna, six foot manna. I'm standing here. And they said, he's not, see, now the context changes. Look at the words of their mouth, how it changes. He's not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know. How is it then he says, I have come down from heaven. Jesus therefore answered and said to them, do not murmur among yourselves. Because Jesus clearly understood. They started looking at them now as a carpenter or carpenter's son. This guy, we know him from birth. And first of all, they don't believe that he's born of Holy Spirit, right? He, they still look at him as the illegitimate child. They think that Mary begot Jesus with some, you know, through some other person. And that, that theory was there always running in their mind. And now the con, the, you know the 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 the, the context changes a little bit, and Jesus says, "Stop! Do not murmur. No one come to me unless the Father who sends me sent me draws him, and I will raise him up at the last day." And then uh, it goes on and on and on and on. And I'm 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 just skipping few verses. And verse number forty-eight: "I am the bread of life." Jesus now gets all worked up. Why are you so stupid? Why are you so foolish? Why are you not trusting me? Jesus exclaims now, most assuredly, I say to you, he who comes in me, believes in me and has everlasting life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and are dead and gone. Now, this is the bread which comes down from heaven that one may eat of it and not die. Look at the words of his mouth. What is our uh, basis for this discussion? Untamable tongue. The words that brings confidence and life. The words that speaks the truth. These are the words of Jesus. And he's saying, I am the living bread, verse 51, which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I shall give in my flesh, which I shall give for the life of the world. And he continues going on, right? Verse 52, Jews therefore quarreled among themselves saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? They are literally taking, right? Jesus is representing the words that he spoke out of his mouth are to be considered as manna. You are supposed when you meditate on the word of God, 
when you spend time in the presence of God, analyzing, help, allowing the word of God to travel through your heart, it pierces your heart. It makes your heart bleed. And you repent of your sins. It's as good as like eating that mutton biryani, that tasty biryani or that tasty pizza or that burger. You understand, huh? Jesus speaks in that way. How The more you uh, travel through the word of God, analyze the word of God, meditate on the word of God is as good as like eating that loving food. Yeah, as how your fathers ate that manna in the wilderness. It's eating that tasty food, food of angels, food given to you from heaven. In other words, he's simply telling, if you follow my teachings, it's as good as like eating that manna. Yes. Follow my words, obey my words, heed to the voice of my words, words, words. But these guys are not ready to listen. They quarreled how this can man, the man give flesh to eat. And Jesus said to them, most surely I said you, unless you eat the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. He's even more plain. First of all, they haven't even understood the flesh concept. He's also introducing blood concept now. Blood concept is what? 1 John 1, 7 to 10 tells that those who shall be cleansed through the blood of Jesus, only then they are pronounced as righteous. Why? Because there is nothing, no instrument. There is nothing that is available. Not the blood of the lamb, not the blood of the sheep, not the blood of an animal can cleanse them. Only the blood of the most righteous God, Son of God. Yeah, shedding the blood and he purchases for a price. 1 Corinthians 6.20 says that. And although he was righteous, he died for the unjust. 1 Peter 1, 19 and 3, 18 says, I already quoted that reference. Those who shall believe in that word, they shall go through this cleansing process. Right? You won't see the blood literally coming and cleansing you. But as a, symb as a symbolic representation in churches, we do it. Right? And some people even take that cup of water and they sprinkle that water across the uh, house or they drink that water. Uh, yeah, symbolically they, they do it, but don't expect that water to become blood and you're drinking blood. You're not a Hannibal and God never expects you to be an Hannibal. Understand? Hannibal cannibals, you know that, right? You're, you're not to be behaving that way, but these guys literally started behaving that way. Are we cannibals that you're asking us to eat that blood? Are we barbarians? Huh? Are we coming from the tribal area? No, we cook food and we eat. And that too, not human flesh. Ah, this teaching is killing us. For my flesh is food indeed and my blood is drink indeed. Jesus goes on and on. He's not, he's unstoppable. The words of his mouth are so plain, so sharp, so strong. And he is not ready to compromise on that. He goes on and on. You want to understand, you understand. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. As the living father sent me, I live because of the father. So he who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers ate the manna. Yeah, I'm to be called as that manna, but not like that manna, that wafer, which dies the next day morning, right? It comes in the evening, it dies the next day morning. The worms will come and eat it up. I am not that worm eating manna, but I am that everlasting life. I live forever. I'm immortal. In other words, he says, and ate bread and are dead. Right? Your fathers are dead and he who eats this bread will live forever, man. You will live in eternity. You have your second life after death. Maybe in rapture or maybe after judgment. But you are going to be in eternity. You are going to be with me forever and ever. About which I have spoken enough in this series. Yeah? You may want to tune up episode 1. These things which he said in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Look at the words of the Lord. Right? We are talking here about the words that proceeds from mouth. Mouth of mankind in comparison to the mouth that uh, the words that came from the mouth of Jesus who took that human form when he could talk like this to convict people to speak the truth to tell them uh, about the secrets of heaven. You and I also can do the same. That's exactly the message what we are trying to convey. And the reaction happens. Um, we will we will close in five to ten minutes. I, I don't think I'll be able to move ahead with chapter seven. I was thinking to cover both. But we will see what best to do. Now, verse number 60. Therefore, many disciples, when they heard this, this is a hard saying, who can understand it? When Jesus knew this himself, that his disciples murmured, he said to them, does this offend you? 
what then if you should see the son of man ascend where he was before he was already talking about resurrection resurrection and taking his place as intercessor on the, on the right side of the father in heaven hebrews 1:3 seated on the right side of the father in heaven as our intercessor pleading for our needs and he is our advocate who's fighting against the accuser who accuses the brother and day and night revelation 12 and all these things if i were to tell already you guys won't understand anything man you're not even able to understand the very purpose why i am sent to this world yeah this is how the words um, of some pastors are these days absolutely words that no one can understand yeah they are talking about a different jesus as how these guys took jesus so differently that they are not even able to understand that he is that manna the words that he is going to teach are going to introduce 1050 commandments and laws of new testament but their attitude is still sticking to the 613 commandments spoken to them by moses no he is talking about a different doctrine here is elevating the standard he didn't abolish those 613 commandments no but he has come to introduce another 1050 commandments through his teachings to improve and take the spiritual quality to the next level yeah to improve the spiritual health get you closer to god yeah and you are going to see an everlasting life which that 613 commandments cannot give but these commandments will give these new doctrines will give these new teachings will give And if I were to say the secrets of heaven, how are you going to bear it, man? Verse number seventy. Jesus answered them, "Did I not choose you, the twelve, and one of you is a devil?" He says already. He spoke to Judah uh, of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. To what extent, um, uh, who said uh, Judas disbelieved that he even became devil, and he is going, he is going to betray. And Jesus told this plainly, no figurative language, no riddle, right? not not symbolically he told this plainly you will hate me so much you will betray me okay and uh, verse number uh, chapter 7 verses 3 and 4 his brothers therefore said to him depart from here and go into judea that your disciples also may see the works that you are doing for no one does anything in secret while he himself seeks to be known openly if you do these things show yourself to the world for even his brothers did not believe in him this this time it's to, it's spoken about the brothers mean the children born for joseph and mary those were brothers they grew along with jesus and one of them only became a disciple that is like small james big james small james right small james is the uh, uh, who's that the half brother of jesus the remaining did not believe right the words that proceeded from the mouth of jesus was not able to win their confidence that means two things here we are not paying attention we are not good listeners and number two we are not speaking the words in a similar way how jesus spoke to his disciples right these are the words of authority these are the words of purity these are the words that revealed revelations words of revelation revealing the secrets of heaven you and i do we use our mouth in this way are, are our words similar to what jesus spoke time to take you know take a note of all of these things and there was such murmuring among the people concerning him some said he is good others said no and he deceives the people verse number 12 7 12 and verse 14 now about the middle of the feast jesus went up into the temple and taught and the jews marveled saying how does this man know letters having never studied jesus answered them and said my doctrine is not mine but this is who sent me yeah with that we will conclude but what is the bottom line what is that we have learned i would like to quickly summarize what we have learned are the following number 1 we need to heed the voice of god that arises deep within us number 2 we need to follow the principles of jesus we need to understand this jesus better right as how these people didn't understand the real jesus messiah standing right in front of them they are tempting him with all crazy questions number 3 we need to trust god believe him blindly for what he had said what he had taught what he had preached they did not believe but they are tempting him number 4 refrain from tempting god refrain from challenging god refrain from testing god 
And that's exactly what these people said or tempted God. And Jesus was so patient to explain, hey, you cannot tempt me, but you need to believe me. I am that manna. I am that word. And he also spoke about number five, thirst, right? Seeking the Holy Spirit to lead us, shed light. You need to pray for that anointing, not the tongue speaking, you know, beating your hands roughly and then speaking in the tongue, tongues. You have to do that in private. You don't have to do it in public. That's what Paul said. And Jesus never spoke in tongues in public, probably in private. He was praying in the Mount Olives and he, probably he was talking to God. And that also was not revealed. Why? Because it's not important. What is important? Your conscience improving, your spiritual health improving, the words of your mouth speaking the right things. That's how Jesus spoke. And you, you see what happened? And these are the five principles we learned today, right? And you know what happened, right? I just now read. Nobody believed in him. Even after Jesus speaking so plainly, Judas Iscariot never had that attitude to repent for what Jesus had spoken. Because why? There was no realization. The words that proceeds from the mouth of God definitely needs attention. And you don't pay attention. The words of your own mouth also may lead you to deception. And that's exactly what happened to Judas. The words of his mouth betrayed Jesus, not even knowing that he is into betrayal. But it was too late for him to realize the betrayal. He threw the 30 silver coins and then he ended his life. Too late. Right? Watch out what God is talking to you. What proceeds from the mouth of God and be a good listener. And watch out what proceeds from your mouth. Is it misleading you? Are those words of deception? Are, the, are, are those words of murmuring? Or are those words of belief? Right? reflecting the love of God. Heads bowed down and eyes closed. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this wonderful session, God. We accept that you are that manna who came from heaven and your words are that manna which can feed us and we are hungry, God. Feed us with that word and we are thirsty, loving Father. Please give us more anointing, fruits of the Holy Spirit we need and gifts of the Holy Spirit we need. Bless my brethren and sisters. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Stay tuned. I will soon meet you with chapter 8. And we are here talking from the word of God, analyzing the life of Jesus. And we are still, we have so much to cover from this subject, Untamable Tongue. Hope you are enjoying the sessions. Please comment, subscribe to our channels and listen to all our videos and share it with your friends and relatives. God bless you.